you know, if you're a Canadian, you might just own more than one plaid jacket. Maybe you're the same color. Or as we like to call them, Canary dinner jackets. Or you may be like me and own more than one pair of snowshoes. Hey everybody, thanks for stopping by. I really do appreciate it when you spend a bit of time with me. So we got some snow last night, as you can see, it's beautiful out. And I thought I'd put on the old snowshoes, head out back, carve a new trail. But before I do that, I'd like to show you the snowshoes that I have. They're all a little bit different. They do a little bit of a different job. And I'm not sure if one snowshoe can rule them all. You might need to get a few different styles depending on the conditions you live in, the conditions you're usually going outdoors in, and the terrain that you're usually snowshoeing on. So stick around, I'll show you the ones that I've chosen, and maybe it'll help you if you're thinking about getting a new pair of snowshoes. So when shopping for snowshoes, it can be a little bit confusing because they are a lot of different sizes, a lot of different shapes, a lot of different prices as well. But when you're shopping, a lot of times they'll have a weight limitation on them. A weight limitation can mean something, it can mean nothing. Snow conditions are going to really dictate how well any particular snowshoe is going to let you ride above the snow. If it's really light powdery, you're going to sink a little bit farther down than if it's warmer and the snow is a little bit packed or it's a little wet. So you want to maybe have more than one kind of snowshoes for different conditions. Now these ones here are quite big. They're 16 by 48 inches long. And really there's no substitute for square inches when it comes to keeping you on top of the snow. Okay, there's lots of surface area and this will float you above the snow. Now they are made from 100% traditional materials rawhide lacing for the deck and a wooden frame now they're beautiful i really love these but they require a little bit of maintenance so before you put them away every year take a good look at them you may have to recoat them with a uh, waterproof varathane just give them a quick scuff and uh, recoat them and that will keep them in serviceable condition for many years now you can put various types of bindings on these snowshoes I went with these very traditional lampwick bindings and as you can see there is nothing on the bottom for grip or for traction okay now you can buy uh, different types of bent bindings which will give you teeth on the bottom which will give you more grip but I keep these snowshoes for deep powder and flat trails or even uh, lake crossings okay so I don't really feel like I need the crampons on the bottom of these particular snowshoes. If I need crampons, I would probably go to my hybrids or go to my moderns. So here's one option, all traditional, really nice, beautiful looking snowshoes. But is that all you need? So you don't always need a snowshoe like this with a lot of surface area. Maybe you'll be going on a pack trail. Maybe you'll be going in the woods where you'll be skirting trees, maybe crossing over rocks, and you want something a little more compact. Now there are traditional style snowshoes that'll fit that bill, but I have these, these MSR Denali's. Now, what I love about these Denali's is that they're very versatile, okay? If you look on the bottom, there's a very aggressive crampon system all the way down. Uh, even in the front here where your foot would fit into, it's very aggressive. It really digs in. I like that. The binding system, well, it's all rubber. I've had to repair them a couple times, um, but they're holding up fairly well. And if you need replacements, they're readily available. Now, as I showed you, these have a very aggressive crampon system on the bottom. And I really like that because I find it versatile. I can remove this tail, okay, on the bottom. Now that reduces the surface area, of course. These aren't going to float me as high on the snow as if I have the tail on. But now I have a really light, maneuverable snowshoe that I can use even if it's icy. So in my last video, I wore these snowshoes. We didn't have a lot of snow, but what we did have is a lot of ice. And I felt a lot safer using these snowshoes with the aggressive crampon. So that's one little safety feature and one nice thing to have 
with the modern snowshoes because most of them do have a pretty aggressive cramp on system. Now these don't really require any maintenance. That's another plus. And they are very versatile as I showed. I've had these for quite a few years. I like them a lot. So sitting somewhere in the middle of those two extremes are these ones. These are made by a company called Faber. And I call them a hybrid because they're made out of man-made materials and natural materials. And what I like about them is that they don't require a lot of maintenance. You do have to look after the wood on them. But actually the most problematic part of a snowshoe is when you have a rawhide decking. And that's what seems to take the most care. But you still have to pay attention to the wood on these snowshoes, okay? I do like these ones because they do have a bit of a crampon system on the bottom, okay? It's gonna give you a little bit of grip. As you can see, this will give you some traction and there is a studded bottom. So that's gonna give you a little bit of grip in the snow. And the binding system's really easy to put on. Just slip your boot in, tighten it up, tighten up the buckle at the back and you're good to go. And with this deck, the way it is, there's a lot of square inches there and it really gives you some good flotation. So maybe something like this, a hybrid, with mostly a solid deck, would be something that might interest you. So as I said, different kinds of snowshoes are suitable for different types of terrains, different types of conditions. So what I did is I put on the traditional snowshoes. I'm gonna climb this hill behind me. It's fairly steep, about 35 degrees I would estimate. And these traditional snowshoes don't have any crampons on the bottom. You're gonna see that I don't get much traction. And especially when I come back down the hill, uh, I could really lose my grip fast. I'm just gonna quickly run up this hill, show you the difference. So they certainly kept me floating. Okay, they work great for that. I really had to push into the snow on the way up to get any kind of purchase on the snow. And on the way down, my feet were wanting to come out from underneath me. So that's not great. So I keep these mainly for flat travel. Okay, so now I'm gonna throw on my modern snowshoes with the crampons and show you the difference. So as you can see, these bindings are pretty easy to get on, even with gloves. That's a big bonus for these uh, MSR Denali's. All right, so now I have on the modern snowshoes, the MSR Denali's, and uh, so I'm just gonna go up the same hill, go over the same track, and remember these ones have those aggressive crampons, and uh, we'll see if they dig into the snow a little bit better, and I know for one thing, these are gonna be much more maneuverable because they're much more narrow, and uh, they're actually probably a little bit lighter, all in all, so uh, let's get up that hill, see how they work out. So much more maneuverable, okay? I was able to get a good grip going up the hill. At the top of the hill when I turned around, they're very maneuverable. So, you know, these are a little bit better for in the woods on a packed trail, or maybe when you're gonna encounter some ice. All right, there you have it. A few of the pairs of snowshoes that I really enjoy using. So I don't really favor one over the other, actually. 
they have different uses and they have different places in my gear closet but I do use them all okay so terrain and snow conditions will determine which ones I'm gonna pick flat land and deep powder I'm going with these in the woods a pack trail maybe with some ice where I have to skirt boulders and trees I'm going with these modern ones for sure so uh, today I'm gonna go right down the middle I'm gonna use the hybrid snowshoes because I don't want to play favorites but before I leave I'd like to encourage you to subscribe to my channel if you haven't already please give me the thumbs up if you'd be so kind and for sure I appreciate it if you leave a comment down below let me know what kind of snowshoes you prefer do you hate snowshoeing do you love snowshoeing maybe you don't even get snow where you live but please leave a comment and in the meantime guys I'd like you to take care we'll see you on the next one